There's not a day that we sit on the beach that Harold Sills, or Mr. Benz, or John Turchi, or Pep, or Frank Cullen, or everybody in this John Romano's name has not been mentioned during that day. Every single day, somebody in this room, my father talks about, and talks about it at our family dinners, and talks about it with a smile on his face, because you're what makes his life fabulous. And the other side of it is that my father makes everybody else feel fabulous, because there's nobody that entertains, that nobody has a joie de vivre, that nobody looks at life the way that my father does. At Lynn Abraham's funeral uh, for Frank, on, uh, I think it was this past week, while Lynn made the most beautiful speech I've ever heard in my entire life, my father was looking around saying, I don't want the flowers, I want my band, I want the mummers, uh, and we were talking about whether or not we should have a fake body in the casket, so when, the, when Bins and all you guys walk him out, and we drop the casket on the floor and somebody else rolls out, or a pretty girl, I think the crowd would really like that. So I just want you to know what we're all thinking about right now. Because uh, in this great real estate environment, which we're just trying to think about other fun things at the same time. Um, you all are part of our family, and frankly, I should be saying wonderful things about you all as the son. But as the son of my father, I've also had to deal with a lot of problems having you guys be my old man's friend. Now, when I say that in a positive way, I tried to make reservations with Beck Fan the other night. I said my name was Benzwanger. They said, which Benzwanger? is it? And I said, is that John Turchie coming with you, or are you coming by yourself? <laughs> I tried to explain to him that I was the next generation, Frank Benzwanger III, and that John wasn't coming. Uh, that, uh, and then I realized that I'd probably rather be with John. It was the wrong restaurant. The hell with him. I told him to go to hell. So, uh, but I want to say uh, uh, there's not a restaurant. There's not a place in town. And I would look at somebody like Pep. When you walk into Pep, there's our Benzwinger Christmas cards sitting up there in a row. Every Christmas card probably the last five to ten years. His sisters, everyone who works in that, when you hug them, they're glad you're there. Your family, and uh, I just have to tell you, uh, it was peppy that when I was 14 years old, Dad, when I wanted to buy wine with my girlfriends, that's where I used to get the wine. So I just want you to know that uh, little secrets about some of the guys in this room. John Romano, you're a pain in the ass. I'm going to tell you that right now. My father looks at you not only as somebody that makes him look good, but a psychiatrist. Every goddamn thing I do in my life says, John Romano says you're wrong. Okay? Now, I try to explain to him that I love John Romano, and he says to me, don't tell me if we need good red wine, there's only one place to get it from Romano, you're wrong. So I want you to know, Romano, you're a pain in the ass, and uh, all the thinking, whether it's uh, conservative or liberal, I don't know where he's getting some of his thoughts from, but I think it's coming directly from you, so the hell with you. Uh, uh, Herb Lipson was supposed to be here, but I don't know, I think this Herb's walking around trying to shop still. You know, where is he? He's sick? Okay, good, he had a good night last night, I can tell that. Herb, I, I love because it's the only place we could go. First of all, Herb had great stepdaughters. For all the Binswangers, it was fabulous to be able to grow up next to Herb because any your whole sexual revolution was uh, accomplished. Whatever you had to do, you'd always go to the Lipsons and somehow it was taken care of. So I want to personally thank Herb, even though he's not here today. Frankly, I would tell you that's probably my father's best friend in my mind. And I, I want you to know that. Uh, so, Herb, I'm sorry you're not here. Uh, Buddy Newman, you're also a pain in the ass, and Buddy's not here, I don't think. Buddy Newman's the only guy, in the, my father's friend was on Wide World of Sports, that won the arm wrestling. Remember that in the old days, the arm wrestling? Well, this guy's about half the size of me. I bring my girlfriend home, and hopefully he was one of the Lipson daughters. And Buddy, first thing he'd always yell at me, he'd say, come over here, I want to arm wrestle with you. Buddy would rock, take my arm and he would flip that arm back so fast it looked like a schmuck after I thought I was so great. So, Buddy, the, uh, f go fuck yourself. So, uh, that's for Buddy. Uh, Jimmy Benz, I just want you to know, you're a pain in the ass too because uh, Jimmy Benz uh, taught us about the fight game. There's nobody any more famous, but my family grew up in the fight game. I don't know if Jimmy was involved dad, with Cloverleaf or how my mother got involved with Joe Frazier, but I think Mr. I may be too young, but uh, we grew up in the fight game so that my father used to take all of us down to the arena. Right, Jim, or the arena in the old days? And we used to watch Willie the Worm and uh, Bernie Briscoe, and we were the only probably uh, uh, 
I would say, really non-fight people that were really there on the front row, and I gotta tell you, it was the only way to grow up. That's a where I said there were only Jews in the place. <laughs> it was the only Jews in the place. And all I kept hearing my mother would yell out is, retaliate, retaliate. And I went, we gotta get the hell out of here. I, I want you to know, we did grow up in the fight game. It's one of the, the best things we, my father ever did for us in every fight at the Spectrum, and uh, uh, I think you had a lot to do with it, Jimmy, so I appreciate it. Bobby, uh, where's Bobby? Uh, Bobby is important to my father because he's keeping uh, uh, my father, uh, keeping my father on his feet. You want to say a couple of two minutes here? You want to tell what you, how many times you've saved his life in the last uh, year? No, no, we talked about it already. <laughs> well, Bobby has saved my father, uh, whether it was breaking his shoulder when he thought he was dead on the street, or he, uh, you want to talk about the time that he was exercising? You want to come up here and just, why don't you tell Bobby? Right. Say, me doing this. I don't know how many people have seen Frank work out, but uh, he, he dresses like this and he puts a towel around his neck and um, he likes to hold his breath. So we used to do this exercise where Frank would hang from this pole. We did it 20 times. He never had a problem. One day I put Frank up on the pole and he hung his, he was holding his breath. Next thing you know, I look over, he's passed out, unconscious, with his head hanging over this bar. I said, Frank, what happened? He says, I don't know, I passed out. So we finally figured he choked himself out by holding his arms up like this. So I'm all worried, I'm trying to get him home. I call Sue, I said, Sue, Frank passed out in the gym. And uh, Frank says, I'm not going home, I gotta go to Capitol Grill, I got dinner in now. We take him into the executive locker room, his legs bleeding, we bandage him up. Next thing you know, Frank's having a martini. An hour and a half later, the guy is not gonna die for a while. He's gonna be around, so. Thank you, Bobby. Well, I think it's also fun that uh, the time that we did, uh, he did choke, uh, we were lucky enough to uh, save his life, and he's the only person that could be choking in one minute, and someone said, I think he's dead, and then the, the beef shoots out of his throat, and within two minutes he's asking for a double vodka. Uh, I, not a lot of people do that, it's, uh, but I will tell you he is, has a lot of, lot of lives. Um, when you look at guys like Frank Cullen and Clive and Etienne and Dan Cullen and the guys that have been in this room and worked with them. I don't know what you think it's like working with my father, but when you come in and you say something to him, if he doesn't like it, he has this on his desk. And what he does is, if you ask him a question, Frank says, I need your help. I or probably says, I don't need your help. I can save the fuck out of my deal. Then my father looks at him and goes like this. This is all my father's desk. This is all my father does. He keeps going like this. He doesn't say the word fuck anymore. He just keeps going like this. And this is what it's like working with my father. Uh, 24 hours a day. Frank Cullen, am I right on that? Is that a fair comment? Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. I want you to know that uh, uh, my father loves the guys that work for him. And, uh, I learned everything from uh, Frank myself. But uh, you watch uh, these guys and uh, Clive's the son just had a beautiful wedding on Sunday. And uh, Frank just had a beautiful son. And Etienne and Dan has just joined us. Uh, uh, the loyalty to our family and to my father and the friendships that uh, he has created with uh, the guys that work with us, uh, but not only with us, but dad is there with them 24 hours a day in the pit fighting the war, continue to fight the war, and the war will never end. And uh, I know that they love him, uh, you being there, and more importantly, he loves you being there with him. And I just want you to know that. Uh, from a family standpoint, you got to look at, there's really three people in this room, and I didn't point out everybody, forgive me if I don't have everyone, but that wasn't the point of it, because Craig Drake, I've heard all the stories, so I don't need to say much about you, I hear it from your son and everybody else, and we're trying to keep you and my father out of trouble, so I, I, I first of all, love you being with my dad, and the two of you are characters, so, but I, I don't want to just uh, talk about everybody, I do want to talk about a couple of people, and that is uh, Layton, David Snyder, uh, and, and Ray. Ray is uh, our family. Ray is Christmas gifts are right next to uh, my kids' Christmas gifts every year. Uh, while you are all gone or everybody goes home at night, uh, there's Ray and Dad sitting there talking about the world, which really scares me. Uh, but you want to talk about brothers, and you want to talk about two people that love each other and care about each other. And because uh, a lot of times people go away and go home, but uh, there's also family and. Uh, Ray, I can't tell you how much you've done for my dad and for us, and, and we love you. You know that. Uh, Layton and David, uh, 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 I don't have to say much. Uh, you're the you're, you're family. You, you live with it every day. You deal with it every day. Uh, but uh, 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 and for you guys to be here, I know it also means a lot to, to my dad. Uh, David